it's very unnerving to see dancing during the uh, intro for the twos review, but that's what's happening in the booth at Fifth Third Bank Stadium. Atlanta United 2 with a 1-0 win over Louisville City in USL Championship action tonight. Aiden McFadden with the goal, Caleb Wiley with the assist. And the dramatics were maybe brought by the referee, Chris Rushka. Um, we'll talk about him. We'll talk about lots of different things. Uh, you're joined by John Nelson, Jarrett Smith, and me, Jason Longshore. And we've got quotes from Jack Collison after his first win as a coach. Uh, we've got some quotes from some of the protagonists involved in it. But if you missed the match, first off, go back and watch it on ESPN+, Plus because it was a fun one. Yes. The goal came in the first half, 26th minute. Aiden McFadden with his fifth of the year from Caleb Wiley. Wiley's first assist of the year. And it held up. Uh, second half was all Louisville City. They had almost 70% of the ball. They had a penalty that Alec can saved and then saved the rebound. So it was a different kind of twos win than we've seen so far this season, John. No question about it. And, you know, when Alec can comes up as big as he does for the double save, for the, the PK, and it was just... One of those moments that I think, and and you mentioned it on the broadcast, that this is one of those defining wins that it can be a win that can define your season. It was a gutsy performance across the board by Atlanta United, too. And there were moments in the second half, especially in the the last 20 minutes, where they were hanging on. And I mean they were hanging on. Where the field was tilted, they had nine defending. It was literally that field is at a 45-degree angle, and they're hanging on. So... They get a lot of credit across the board, and uh, not not bad for your first win if you're a Coach Collison, huh? Not too shabby. Uh, man of the match, I think, comes down to Aiden McFadden and, or Alec Can. You go in either direction. Can made seven saves, and one's on a penalty, then one's on the follow-up from the penalty. McFadden with the goal, but also a lot of defensive work and possibly a black eye or bruised cheek or both. Um, it was a very physical match, Jared. It was. It was. Um, it was a beatdown. At first, in the eighth minute, I think it was. You have uh, you have Aiden McFadden goes sliding in wildly into somebody and doesn't get a card. I'm like, oh, he doesn't get a card. That's fine. Cool. This game could get. Yeah, this game could get physical. Oh God, did it get physical? Um, Lou City, uh, Lou City is is going to show up with a lead pipe. And Atlanta United two decided to show up with one too. They're a little bit younger, but there's. And we've talked about this before. It's still a young team like it's been in the past. There's an edge to this team and the way they play that they really don't give a damn, you know, who is going to be, you know, squaring up with them, whether it's going to be a team who comes in here and tries to impose their will like a loose city, who's not only going to impose their will, but going to try and control the game both with the ball and with physicality. And Atlanta United 2 is up to that challenge tonight. The win puts Atlanta United 2 into second place in the Central Division on 11 points, 3-2 and 2 on the year. Lou City is in fifth. FC Tulsa and Birmingham are deep in the second half right now as, as we do this. Their game was delayed for hours and hours. They've probably run out of free hamburgers and hot dogs by now. They were giving them away during the rain delay and lightning delay. Mm -hmm. But Birmingham Legion are up 2-0. If that score holds, the Legion will be sitting on top of the division with 13 points. The twos are right behind them. Indy 11 in third on 10 points. FC Tulsa will be in fourth on nine points. Those are your playoff teams at the moment. John, nobody expected to see Louisville City five games in out of a playoff spot right now after four of those games were at home. And the last one was the first football contest of the year against Indy 11 where they give up two goals. You've got to explain that for people because it's very, very inside baseball, soccer, well, okay, football, okay, whatever you so, want to call it. So the, they, the Indy 11 supporters and Lou City supporters, mm-hmm. they have a nickname – for this match, mm-hmm. they call it for when they when they play. It's Lipa FC. It's an acronym. The Louisville Indy Proximity Association Football Contest. They call it Lipa FC. And so instead of just calling it Lipa FC, I just call it a football contest because you know it takes too incredibly long to say the whole thing. 
And so they what acronyms are for. Yeah, but the thing is, you don't if you don't know the acronym, then you have to explain the acronym. Then you have to go back and explain. It's like taking stages. Where were we? Yeah. So yeah. in the eleven beats Loose City at Lynn Family to end that homestand. Then it's their first time on the road, meaning Loose City. You wonder how they're going to respond away from home. And they came in a day early, tried to get acclimated to things, and it was, uh, you know, your standard June humidity here in, uh, in suburban Atlanta. And, you know, it was, uh, you know, I think it's a, a bit of a, an awakening for them about how tough the division's going to be, whether they're at Lynn family starting things off or whether they're going on a road against a, a younger team that wasn't going to back down from them tonight. So Alec can on sofa score with the 9.4 rating, wow. not one that you see very often. Uh, seven saves will do that for you. He was also good in possession with the longer passes as well. McFadden... Only 59% passing. This became a difficult game to complete passes as Louisville City closed things down. But he was 11 of 22 on duels. He had five blocked shots, four clearances, uh, had a tackle, had a clearance off the line as well. McFadden seemingly popping up everywhere. Uh, The back line in a clean sheet. Got to give the shout-out as well to Josh Bauer, who had three interceptions and two tackles. Bradley Camden Fayo who had a couple of block shots, a couple of tackles, an interception, dealing with a lot of aerial duels with Kyle Gregg. But Caleb Wiley, Jarrett, Wiley was so good tonight. He has the assist with his right foot. But on a normal night, that's like, okay, that's great for a homegrown, a 16-year-old, you know, in his second year in USL Championship. That wasn't all he did tonight, though. No, and it was <clears throat> he was very much in his bag, in a sense, in this game. It's a tough game. It's a physical game. Wiley's on that, uh, in my opinion, he's on that Atlanta United weight plan that some of these cats are on because he's put on some size in the last year we've seen him. When we saw him as a 15-year-old, a bit older now, a bit bigger. Uh, And a lot of it for him tonight was the maturity side of it. It wasn't just the the great assist and getting in the way and blocking shots. Uh, Coach Collison talked about, you know, that maturity out of him was huge tonight. Uh, you know, seeing McFadden make that run where Wiley is, he has his head up. Like the game isn't too big for him. The moment isn't the moment isn't too big for him. Where he's getting the ball and looking around and trying to process it. He's already processed it. He sees the run. He makes the play. Um, he also mentioned, uh, you know, this is something they needed after the last game. These guys are looking ahead at things. They're not overwhelmed by the moment. None of them are, including Wiley. You know, they're talked about, you know, after the last game, after you had the tough loss with Birmingham, this is something they needed, something they wanted, and they're already looking ahead to, to Wednesday night here where they play again. Um, but it's it's an interesting thing for him, especially with this lineup, which we can get into. It's a young lineup you threw out there, and these are guys that he has experience with. A lot of these academy players, they've played together for years. That helps with that cohesion, and I'm sure it helped with Collison first time out having a young team with guys he knew. Yeah, guys like Will Riley, guys like Caleb Wiley, guys that, you know, David Mejia as well, players that he has coached in his time. And it's something, John, that we saw Atlanta United 2 do after year one when Scott Donnelly left to become a scout, an international scout with Manchester United. And Stephen Glass was promoted from the U17 team into the second team job. That was his first senior job. And now we know. Glassy is, is getting ready for his first full preseason with Aberdeen. Collison is on that same path. And it's, it's once again, we talk about paths with players. We talk about paths with the academy when it comes to those who are participating and how the path is laid out this way. What Atlanta United, too, is, what Atlanta United as an organization is doing across the board is they're setting up that same track for those who are going to be on the touch line and learning and getting their stripes there as well. So, uh, pun unintentional. But it's the path can work in a bunch of different ways. It works for players, and it's working what we're seeing with managers as well. So not necessarily a surprise, but with the familiarity that the individuals have with the system and with the players and all of that continuity, it's important in these times you can sit there and not skip a beat because you're already in season in a very tough division and a very tough league, and that way there's that level of comfort that's there as well by bringing in someone like a Jack Carlson. 
I want to get into a couple other players before we get some more quotes from the, the post-game media availability. Matias Benitez didn't see much of the ball today. He was 4 of 7 on the dribble. He's one of the best dribblers in the USL Championship. But, Jared, we were talking about it before we came live. Benitez did a lot of the dirty work that isn't going to show up on a box score but is essential in a game like this one. It's vital in a game like this because, I mean, it's it's he's playing up top. He is the spear of that pressure and the spear of the idea if you're going to defend, you defend from the front. You're not just asking your last three to five guys to do the defending. You're defending from the front, and he did that. He's chasing guys around. Lucity is a team that likes to have the ball. You can have the ball if you're going to take it like that, but a guy like Benitez chasing guys around and making Lucity City maybe make that one pass a little bit faster. Maybe, you know, maybe they misplace a ball here or there that can trigger a counter. But pop, pop, pop. The fact that they're not able to just sit on it, but they've got to get it and they've got to get rid of it because of him, uh, because of Connor Stanley pressing up high when he got the chance and getting in and not just getting in, but we saw it a couple times from these guys. It wasn't just the, I'm going to put pressure on it. It's what we've seen against Atlanta United too at times. It's the little hit at the end, the -hmm. little bump and the physicality. Yeah, the reminder that they're there. Because we've seen the twos get pushed around in games like this before like that. But to have somebody bring that physicality of we're going to pressure you and you might get rid of the ball, I'm going to get a tap in. Midfield trio had a lot of work to do as well. Chris Allen, Robbie Mertz, Will Riley were the ones who started it. Um, all of them were, were pretty good on the ball. They were one of the areas of Atlanta United who was good in the passing game today. But they had a lot of different challenges. Uh, Johnny Fortune came in late. Efrain Morales came in late in there to, to help provide a little more security. David Mejia is another player we, we haven't mentioned very much. Only had eight passes on the day. It was a little hard to find him at times in this one just because of the way the game played out. I thought Darwin Mateus came in and, and gave a good shift off the bench as well. Alexander Garuba came on. Very late. And, and ran a marathon. And I, I think for all the fans out there who fell in love with Ezekiel Barco chasing everything in the 2018 playoffs, that's what you saw from Alexander Garuba tonight. He came in and just ran everything down and made it difficult late in the match for Louisville City to push things forward. A couple more stats from the night. On a night where Atlanta United wins, but they only had 39% of the ball and only passed at 70%. Those are not Atlanta United kind of numbers, but the twos found a way to get the win. Tackles and interceptions, Atlanta United 2 had the advantage 14 to 11 and 11 to 9, respectively. Uh, dribbles 13 of 18, Atlanta United 2 was very good on the dribble. Duels 64 for Louisville City, 63 for Atlanta United 2. Very, very even. And, and Jared, we've seen Louisville City come in and and bully teams in the past, yeah. they they didn't force this young team to back down. No, they did not. And, and that's something that I think Louisville City may have been hoping for in the game like this. Even when they're down at the half, one nothing, and thinking, hey, we can bring this physicality to this game, and then we can break them on the wheel. And it didn't happen. Even at the end of the game, where there's seven minutes of stoppage time, <laughs> and everybody, <laughs> that sound. That sound was the same sound I heard in my head. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it was amazing. Uh, man, I, what I'll go back to about it was, uh, you know, Coach Collison talking about after the game, the quote that summed it up for me was he said, the boys were lions out there tonight, and I'm really proud of them. Because that's that was not an easy game. Mm-hmm. Look, it's part of it. And, and we talk about it a lot in terms of philosophy and way to play and style of play and – all those things are critical, and, and you've got to have them. And even in moments where it was difficult, especially late, you still saw Atlanta United, too, trying to knock the ball around and pass and, and keep the ball. But there's games that just you can't play your your style or your philosophy, and you've got to find a different way to win, John, and the twos did that tonight. Yeah, and you're going up against guys who are 6'1", 6'2". You know, when Hubbard came in to crash on late corners, he's 6'3". And you've got guys who are five six, five seven, five eight, and you're having to find those different ways to win because you're not backing down from them in the the one v one sense, but they are they can be more physical than you. They're they're, all, they're larger than you. You have to find those other ways to get something done. And, and I think that this was uh, 
in a way, I thought it was self-discovery for a lot of those guys out there tonight. Hey, we can win a game even if it's not in our main philosophy, and we're not backing down from other guys as well. We're not backing down from any kind of a challenge. You know, you want to bring your best at you, this is what you're going to get in return, and we saw it tonight. One thing in the first half that uh, I don't think Coach Collison talked about afterwards, but it forced Louisville into a, a second-half change. They consistently had the outlet with the long ball to the right. Alec can recognized it early on, as did Bauer, as did Allen, to play McFadden 1v1 with Masoso, who mm-hmm. was a, a converted left back. Yeah. And McFadden just kept winning those opportunities. And then when Louisville had to try to find a different way to defend it, Suahi moved out wide, and that threw everything out of whack. Uh, second half, Louisville City made some adjustments. It was better, but they also weren't quite as dynamic going forward. It became a little bit more of you know, a, a bruising battle from Lee City. Uh, we do have to talk about the penalty. Um, oh. Yeah, uh, that, that's, we, that's, that's part of it. <laughs> do we? Yeah, um, it's a big moment. Um, it was a tough decision on a Johnny Fortune, who had a big play later and, and, and kind of made up for a kind of mistake. I mean, it's a bicycle kick from. He, he made a mistake by being in a position. Yeah, and getting biked in the face. I, I mean, like three feet away, yeah, maybe. Maybe. And it's a bicycle kick where uh, Johnny Fortune's hands are in front of him. They're not out wide. He's not trying to make himself bigger. And a handball is called, which was uh, a little shocking. Uh, but Alec Can made the huge save and the rebound. Um, Six yellow cards for Atlanta United, two, and one for Louisville City in a game that had the foul count at 18 to 15. Uh, Atlanta United, two, with three more fouls than Louisville City and five more yellow cards. The game was managed in a very odd way. Uh, mentioned Aiden McFadden's possible navy blue cheek. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, it is. We saw it. Yeah. It's, it's noticeable. Yeah. Uh, it, it looks like Ralphie in a Christmas story after he got shot with a BB. Uh, I think Alec Can might have stud marks on his legs yeah. um, from Kyle Gregg. I don't think Bradley Camden Feo is going to have a, a mark on his face from Kyle Gregg, but he was caught with an elbow. <laughs> the, 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 the refereeing was a little interesting tonight. Is that a fair way to put it? Sure. Is, is that a diplomatic way to put it? Yeah, I mean, you had the, the yellow to Robbie Mertz on the 17th, and, I, and it was... Out of place. It's quick. It was, I mean, doing something that early, you're setting a tone, whatever that tone is. And then, yeah, uh, I am I mean, the, the the Allen Yellow was a professional foul. I yeah. get that. That one was fine. But the Benitez he, one was kicking it away. Right, he that was one already on, on thin ice but there. Then there. But there were ones that were called that you're going okay, and then there were ones that weren't called and you're going okay. So, interesting. We'll use that word. The, the penalty was very interesting. A, a sequence where Mateus poked the ball away from Suahi, um, but somehow committed a foul when he didn't touch him was interesting as well. Uh, there were some interesting moments. Yes. Um, I think it's, it's interesting the word that Jack Collison used after the match. Yeah, I believe it was. Uh, interesting decisions. Um, and, but yes, this game also... Very diplomatic, I like yes. it. Was, he was very... The man doesn't want to get a fine after his first It's win. game one. You don't Save, want to get you a celebrate fine. Celebrate match that for one game two. Fine. Yes. Save that for Wednesday night with game two. Yes. Um, yeah, it was interesting decisions. But, you know, he talked about this is a game where you need your you need your big guys to step up. And Alakan did. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, that's the, that's the first team guy on this roster tonight. It's, it's kids otherwise. Um, the one of the only guys still on the bench at the end of the night was uh, Rocco Rios Novo, who I thought was going to have to come in when I thought I thought Cam had been gutted when he got slowed when he got into. punctured, yeah, yeah, <laughs> punctured like a balloon. But he said you need guys to step up, and Cam stepped up, and it wasn't just the save for him, for mm-hmm. for Carlson. It was he, he talked about it wasn't just the save, but it was controlling the game, it, uh-huh. you know, slowing things down, not letting the emotions override the actual play and actually just staying in control. Oh, Louis City's really rolling right now? Well, let me fall on this ball. Let's take our time with it. Let's play it short. Let me be the outlet. Let's take the air out of the ball a bit and take Louis City out of it a bit and get them a little more anxious. What other players, uh, what players spoke to the media? Uh, uh, it was uh, Cam and Wiley. 
That's all. Okay. What What did they have to say? Oh, not can. Excuse me. Uh, why did I say that? Aiden McFadden and Wiley. It was Aiden. That's right. Okay. Because yeah, that's how you got to see The Shining. Yeah. Okay. That's why it looks like Ralphie. Um, e. You know, Aiden gave full credit to Wiley on the assist. Um, so he saw him, said he picked him out. and uh, He credited, actually, and, and Aiden also credited the entire team and the entire attacking half of the team uh, for the work they did in the box. Because it wasn't just the, the run that you see from Aiden McFadden making the diagonal run. It's everyone in the box, and they're not standing around waiting. There's movement in the box. It keeps Louisville City from being able to lock in and settle into a set defense. Guys are moving around. You lose guys that way. You lose an Aiden McFadden making the long diagonal run, who's been able to just kind of, like, I don't know what you call that finish, other than good. Yeah, it's just a flick. Yeah, it's just a little, little flick finish. It's perfect, though. Nobody's upset at that. But just to, he can he can get that finish. So a lot of credit went to that. Um, you know, talked as well about the guys up top and the defensive work that they did. And it, it does kind of inspire you on when you're defending and you're tired and you're worn out and you're cramping. And you see the guys in front of you uh-huh. putting in a shift and chasing balls down and sliding in. They're not just standing around waiting and pouting because they're not getting the ball. They're in there getting physical with the game and bringing a physicality that I, that I think gives you a bit of a boost as you're defending. Yeah, I mean, seeing the, the work that... Benitez put in up front, Connor Stanley put in up front, also Aiden McFadden after getting popped in the face. Um, you can't slack off, you know, if you're in this team. You're not allowed to because you see that work. It becomes contagious. McFadden is somebody who's turning a lot of heads, and I know the goals are the goal count really is what's getting a lot of people's attention, but the overall work, the overall attitude, he's becoming a team leader. He's becoming a player that I think – you know, Atlanta United fans have to look at as a potential MLS player down the line. I mean, he's followed a very similar path in that the last guy you drafted out of Notre Dame did this too. Mm-hmm. He's just playing in Austin now. But John Gallagher did that. John Gallagher came into Atlanta United too and you know, just did whatever was asked of him. You know, they told him, hey, we need you to play left back. We need you to play right back. We need you to play a position we've just made up. We need you to be a captain of this team. And he did it. Aiden McFadden has been taking these opportunities and running with them. And I'll tell y'all, if you want swagger, he's got some extra. He's got some stored up. The kid does not have any fear about what he is capable of, and it's going to serve him well. Uh, Final thoughts on tonight, John? I think you had it. It was a five-letter word, gutsy. It was a great performance across the board. You saw uh, a team that had to win it in, in, a, in a manner that they're not accustomed to being, you know, to trying to win a match, to be in control, or to try to make sure that you're going to preserve a lead. And so, once again, there, there are lessons to be learned across the board. Sometimes you learn them and you end up getting full points, and that's what happened tonight. Jarrett, final thoughts? Um, it's really cheesy and easy to say, like, yeah, you could have drawn this game and I'd still feel good about it, but... Man, the, the, it wasn't just the three points for me. It was the performance that you went toe-to-toe with a team like Lou City. Who's going to throw punches at you? And you weren't afraid to throw punches at them. You picked up a bunch of cards. Um, you played physical. You fought with them. And you defended to the very end. And everybody stepped up when they needed to in a way that they needed to. And it's to the point now, I think it's, you're really comfortable looking at this team saying, I don't mind throwing a 16-year-old out there because they're not going to play like a 16-year-old. They're going to play against a guy who might be old enough to be their dad, and they're going to go out there and try and tackle them. They finished the match, and, and I think we, we've seen it at times where the twos have played really well for 80, for 85, for 88, maybe 90. Yeah. Tonight they had to go 90 even. plus 7, and they found a way to get it done. Hey, Charleston, how are you doing tonight? Uh, don't even get me started on that one. It was at least shown as 7. It wasn't 6, and then a phantom minute was added on. Uh, third clean sheet of the season out of seven, and, and that's another really impressive element. Third clean sheet with the third different goalkeeper to get a clean sheet, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Rocco Rios Novo had the one out in Oklahoma City. Uh, Lungard had the one against Tulsa, and Alec Can gets his clean sheet tonight. Aiden McFadden gets his fifth goal. Caleb Wiley gets an assist, and the twos move into second place in the Central Division. They face another Central Division team on Wednesday. Sporting Kansas City 2 comes to town. 7.30 kick, 
here at Fifth Third Bank Stadium. You can watch on ESPN+. Plus. We'll have a twos review afterwards. Uh, we're hoping to get a chance to talk to Jack Collison this week on Soccer Down Here. Stay tuned for that. And uh, this week on Stoppage Time over at 92.9 The Game's Facebook page, we will have an interview with Bryce Washington, newly signed with Atlanta United, who I would expect to see with Atlanta United too, sooner rather than later. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being part of the SDH family. We'll be alive in the morning to talk more about this game, also more about the United States and Mexico in the Nations League final over in CONCACAF. So plenty to talk about on an overreaction Monday. We'll be with that at 9 o'clock in the morning on twitch.tv slash soccer down here. Y'all have a good rest of the night. Mooch Plot, y'all. Mooch Plot, y'all.